Hey guys, welcome to another video from the Power Up Bros. Now you join me today doing the first drive in my 150 Roadster. And what a glorious day. We're a tiny bit overcast, which is perfect uh, because it is hot. Uh, but this car is absolutely great. And I want to explain to you why I feel that the 150 is completely underrated and it is such a great car. And that's not just because of the fact that you can buy them from a thousand pounds upwards, but we'll jump into a little bit more about the car and why maybe you should get one straight after this intro. Now the 150 was introduced later on in production, so I think from about 2003, 2004 to 2006, which means it comes with all the facelift goodies. It has the better windscreen wipers, it has the nice three bar funk grille. Sometimes they'll have different inserts in the headlights themselves. Now, um, being a lesser spec, um, as in a 150, it comes with the smaller wheels, bigger tires, but that's not a bad thing in a Roadster because it actually adds to the comfort of the drive. Yes, you can change them out entirely up to you what you want to do, but it makes the ride a lot more comfortable and being a Roadster, you don't want to be thrashing it round and rallying around. You want that nice, comfortable drive, enjoyable roof down, sunny day, lovely. Um, the engine and gearbox, the engine, still a 1.8 turbo, still nigh on exactly the same, albeit no forged pistons, but it is pretty much the same, but it has one small difference. It has a KO3 turbo, which is a smaller turbo. Now, you may say, oh, smaller turbo, it won't be as quick, and you are correct, but because it's a smaller turbo, it spools up quicker. It is absolutely quick as anything. When you drop it into a gear, it is on boost already. Any gear you want to pick, I'll go for third, and it is straight on boost. Yeah, there's not loads of it, but it is straight on boost. Round town, fantastic. Even on a country drive like today, 50, 60 mile an hour sits perfect. It has a five-speed manual gearbox. Now, actually quite a good thing um, for drive-wise because first gear is actually half decent and we'll go most of the way up to 30 um, and fifth gear when you're in fifth at 70 miles an hour it will sit a smidge over 3000 rpm which is very similar to the six-speed box so from that perspective you've got less gears to go through the gears are slightly better ratios and it's actually quite a nice drive now it's front wheel drive not a quattro which means it feels that little bit quicker as well because you're only driving the two front wheels. You get a load of one tire fire wheel spin if you get off a bit too quick in gravel on grass. Um, but it changes the characteristics of how it drives. It also has a solid rear axle rather than all the Quattro models which have an independent suspension. So drive-wise, it drives a lot more intuitively to what you're used to if you're used to a normal front wheel drive car. Um, if you have harder suspension, you might be able to get one wheel off the ground into hard cornering on, say, track or really fast roads. Um, but it is a nice, comfortable drive. Now, these start, and when I looked online, um, August 2023, um, these were going for anywhere from a thousand pound upwards, which is incredible because you get all of the looks and styling of a TT, you get all of the luxuries, it has leather. It has all of the aircon, it has the, the climate control, all of the normal things that you get in every single TT, this has. Now, I'm not saying these won't have been raced and rallied, but if someone's consciously gone to Audi and specced up a TT and bought the 150 model, the likelihood is they're not chasing a fast car. They may be an older discerning gentleman, it might be a, a woman who wants a nice luxury Audi but doesn't need the big turbo engine. So I'm not saying they haven't been raced and rallied, but if you look at the, the person, types of people that may buy these from you, you're gonna get a good car. Now this has full Audi service history up till 2017, uh, because the guy I purchased this from got it in 2017 and used his local garage from there onwards. Um, this has the original bill of sale. This was 22,900 pounds from new. And you can buy them for a grand. 1500 pounds now incredible um, it has all of the mod cons that you would want from a car of this era uh, obviously you want to add some things like a phone holder because if you want sat nav there is no decent place to put a phone holder unless you buy like a vent mount or a windscreen one uh, it comes with you're going to want to put some sort of music playback in whether that be a bluetooth transmitter for the stereo or you get the stereo changed out but it's not always the easiest thing to do because if they're bows or anything similar, then it's a pain. 
Um, but apart from that, it is a fantastic car. And if you want to dip your toe into the TT market, I thoroughly recommend at least test driving one of these if you're considering buying a TT. Um, do they do a 150 in a coupe, I hear you ask? That is something I don't know the answer to. I don't think so. Please correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments. I know you will anyway. Um, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it's, it's limited to the roadsters. However, I may be wrong but absolutely fantastic cars. And I love driving this. I wouldn't, apart from when you go into floor it, floor it, chasing someone or, or joining a dual carriageway, unless you've driven a 225, you wouldn't really know the difference. You could probably get a cheeky rolling road map um, or a plug-in remap, which may give you an extra sort of 30 horsepower, which will give you a little bit more boost. Um, and then it may feel a little bit quicker. Now I've driven one of these years ago that was mapped and honestly, if you hadn't told me it was a 150, I'd have thought it was a 180 or a 225. It had plenty of punch because it's that small turbo. It comes on like a rocket straight away. Absolutely fantastic. You've got all your luxuries. You've got your aircon. You're, you're driving around in a TT if it's debadged, unless everyone knows because it's got a single exhaust, um, they wouldn't know any different. You can always swap the exhaust to a 225 exhaust if you want. Um, tires are going to be cheaper, although you'll probably change the wheels for something a bit tasty if you watch my channel, um, I'm sure. The brakes are slightly smaller. It has slightly smaller brakes on the front and rear. Um, still discs all around, so it's still quite a nice pedal feel. Um, decent brakes, got no complaints about those. Um, it is just a brilliant car. I think if you were looking for a TT and your budget isn't particularly large and you wanted a roadster, this is definitely one to go and try. I do not think you'll be disappointed unless you are chasing power figures, like I said, but it's not all about that. You can do 80 in this and lose your license, 90, whatever. It will quite happily do it, and it sits comfortably at a decent rate of knots. Now, I'm going down a country lane, there's a giant van coming, so this should be fun. Hopefully, he'll be happy to mount the path. We shall see. But I thoroughly rate this, and I think if you're looking for a cheap TT, um, the 150s and 180s are not to be missed. Um, the slight differences between the, it would be a 190 actually if you're buying this later model, um, is that they come with a KO3S, so slightly better turbo, similar size, different characteristics, but great little cars. And until you've driven one, I mean, up a hill, picks up just fine, straight to 40, no problem. Um, tuning wise, if you're gonna tune one of these, there's, the bits are harder to get, and like I said, the. The ceiling cap is around 200, 210, don't quote me on that, but it's, I know it's around that. Um, and then you have to spend a lot more money. So if you're gonna buy one, to, you're gonna tune it up, probably not the one for you. But from a, a, a driving perspective, like I said, unless you need to go fast all the time everywhere, this would be a fantastic car. Value for money, this is by far the best TT that you can buy. If you can get one for sort of 1,500 quid, you'll not regret it, and it'll always be worth that. They're never going to go down in price. Um, this one's a two-owner car. It has got absolutely loads of extras. I say loads. It has a Toneo cover and a cup holder, but <laughs> loads of extras. Um, I may swap the wheels for something a bit bigger, but then the brakes will look smaller and it will take away from the comfort of the drive. So I may or may not. I don't actually know. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you've got anything you'd like to add, if you've got a 150 or a 180, or if you had a 150 or a 180, please feel free to comment, let me know how you feel, or if you're looking for a TT, go and at least test drive one. I'm not saying go and buy one, um, but please test drive one, see what you think, because um, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. And I feel like this is a very underrated car. Let me know if you agree or disagree. I will take the criticism. Uh, it's not a problem. <laughs> But yeah, what a fantastic car. Like I said, I'm not gonna do loads to it. We might do a health check, um, discuss some of the differences under the bonnet, some of the things that this has that some of the other models don't and vice versa. Um, but like I said, if you're looking to buy a TT or you wanna add a TT to your fleet of TTs, maybe you're thinking about a Roadster and thought, well, actually this video comes up at the right time. Uh, it's gonna be winter, so the price is gonna be better. Um, and you'll get a nice little model. Now, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, as always, down in the comments. Um, really appreciate you guys watching and commenting. I absolutely love talking TTs, so for me, it is fantastic. But until the next one, guys, bye for now.